out. Pleasure. Tell me about the pursuit of photography for you. This is a, this is a little bit of a departure, but I can tell this is a real passion. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a passion, and that's how all these things start. You either, if you don't enjoy something, it's really worthless doing it. So much like music, uh, I find myself enjoying uh, taking pictures and then later on actually thinking about them and in my way trying to be more creative, which is part of that thing I, that I fell in love with, the creative process, so to speak. And and I, muscle memory, Dad always used to take a load of pictures. Oh, really? He was the family, boring photographer. Uh, of course, now we, we love the fact that he did because so, so much of our childhood was kept on snapshot stuff. And then I joined a rock and roll band many years later and, and basically started being the boring member of the band who took pictures all day long. Just stuff, anything, anything and everything. And then later on, probably about 25 years ago, I started uh, Try, trying to be artsy uh, about what I was doing and and I still have periods where I, I take a lot of pictures and think about it a lot and, and this is just some of the stuff that I've, I've taken. Some of these are really interesting because Obviously, the the road. I know where that is, right? <laughs> that, that's near Hana, right? It is Hana, the okay. cross, yeah. right? And and for you, what does that represent? Because you you've taken a few pictures like this. Yes. There's something spiritual going on yes. here. Well, someone asked me the other day if there's sort of a a model that I might go back to in terms of a theme. And I said, the only one I know that I will probably always love to do is take roads that don't seem to go a, a path the, literally you don't know where it's going or it just goes off into the abyss and they, my, all the shots of my roads are pretty much like that I what does it mean to me I, I think it's for me is is thought-provoking of that um, not to be too sort of uh, artsy fartsy about the explanation but we, we're all on those paths going you know to where we're not quite sure uh, we all dream of things um, and I like to be reminded of that there is it's the first ones that I ever took was of a road in, in the countryside in England and I was near a, a church a little village quite frankly I'd seen a whole load of, of gravestones and many of them were, were fallen soldiers from the First World War and I went off on a walk and I imagined when I saw this road of one of the survivors that that had his coming home pack on from the First World War and that was the first image and thought that I had and that held for for me personally something and that's really all it is. Let me ask know. you about that road, that journey, because you've been on this crazy ride since you know, 67. We all have, no? Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you see now, can you look back with clarity at what's happened to you in your career, um, be it photography, but the music business, for instance, how you got taken down this path and you had no idea that your no. success would be so amazing? Yeah, and, and somewhat sustainable oh, through, through a, lot of, a lot of hard work um, uh, and luck and, of course, being surrounded by fantastically talented people uh, didn't do any harm either. Um, so you have no idea uh, of the enormity that happened to Fleetwood Mac. Uh, one thing I can vouch for is that anyone that I've known in, the, in this band, that I've spent time with, or even past members, it, it's something that, that comes from the, one of the first things you said, a, a sense of passion. They would truly be doing that process of mu being involved in music with or without the money. It was nothing about being successful. So when that came, it was uh, fun, and then it became too much fun, and luckily we, amazingly did not get distracted to the point where I I never have a feeling of that was a period when we lost the plot creatively we were very lucky because we tried very hard in many ways in, in the way that we as a as people didn't take care of ourselves very well and so I, a lot of people that whole lifestyle um, change really 
made their lovely creative part in the end fall apart and sometimes never to be put back together. I have no recollect of that happening. We're extremely lucky uh, as a band and people that have had taken the blows, but still this creative force remained uh, very much intact as far as I'm concerned. John Lennon once said something very interesting. They asked him, what was the best period of the Beatles? Right. Now everybody would think Shea Stadium, right? He said the Cavern Club, when it was simple and it was about mm -hmm. the music and the business didn't overwhelm what right. was happening creatively. Do you have a sense of that in your own situation with Fleetwood Mac? I think in, in some ways, um, I, I don't readily uh, ha have that. Uh, does it make I, sense to you when I... No, it, it does, uh, because it was uh, when, when we were playing pubs, and which is our right. Cavern Club or the Marquee Club in London, we were just so happy to be doing what we were doing and putting a bowl of spaghetti on the table. Uh, finding a nice girlfriend. It's very you know, simple. Right? Uh, pretty damn simple. Um, having said that, you can't wish, 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 because that would have meant you'd have stayed in one place. That would be the next question you I would ask John. Right? And and all the lovely things that he did, which was definitely not in the Cavern Club. That he, there was movement. There were challenges. Uh, um, and, and these things leading all over the place uh, that unfolded at such a level that affected all of us. Has that happened in, in, a, in a relatively small way in comparison to, to the person we're talking about? That has happened in a small way r with us. Um, we uh, have affected people Absolutely. and people love our music and that's a very, that, if you reach just a little bit, that's that's a, that actually is the same essence as talking about how it all started, is that that still exists, and it's very simple. You either like something or you don't, and a child will will, will have an instinct, an intuition about a place, a holding of a hand. They know in an instant. So we have a lot of of grateful moments that people feel safe and they like what we've done. With this, I think of, of being a drummer somewhat, it's a solitary business up there. You're in the back, you're keeping the rhythm section together, Oh, you're holding it together. Not solitary. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean, you're not necessarily out front. And, oh and, no, in that respect. And this, yeah. you are. You're the oh, my, my proverbial you Show know what other. is, is uh, this is in Hawaii, okay. and uh, much, uh, yeah, I, I get like, oh, I don't know what I can do that. And, and we colorized this sure. particular piece. Uh, and I then looked at some of the old, like Ansel Adams and all these fantastic old, what they call still life, of course it's not, it's moving all over the place. But they, they colorized, uh, and they sometimes did it themselves, and, and I don't know how to do it properly. So uh, a couple of guys in LA that do it really well, under my supervision, I went, once I felt, well, you know what? That's A-OK, -okay, because you're working with someone else, like the old masters of the photographers did. And I, I took some solace that, that that process, which I will learn to do, uh, obviously anything that's done I, I supervise very closely but I, I immediately thought well you can't do that because it wouldn't be my stuff uh, and then I took a, a glimpse at a lot of stuff that uh, has been colorized and painted by people that are equally talented as, as doing that as taking the picture so this is a, a beginnings of, of what I hope will be uh, a partnership of me doing it and or if I don't do it and I've done loads of it but I don't like it I don't think it's any are, good. Are we so. ever going to see you throw anything out there in a gallery that is kind of a backstage look at your well, life on the road with Fleetwood? I don't think so. No. I've been asked that many times and, and it's actually seems to be a, a consistent thing that, which I quite like is I think people maybe expect sort of ladies to be hanging off chandeliers and things. <laughs> Uh, they're, not, they they're not going to get that. that. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. Would that be a violation? 
No, I, I just, I'm just not, first of all, I'm not really that comfortable. I take loads of shots of people, and, and uh, but I put it in this mode where Mick Fleetwood isn't, uh, I'm not comfortable taking shots of racing cars going 300 miles an hour. Can I do it? Anyone can, and you can get lucky, but I don't really know how to control that technically on any basis at all, which is just a quiet admission that I need to write my little songs slower because I'm, I'm really not that super, super clever at doing it. But what I do see is, is pictures and daylight will come and go and I can actually get more out of that for me. Um, so uh, maybe maybe you will get ladies on chandeliers uh, uh, way down the road, but I, don't I, lose the pictures. Man. I don't think so. <laughs> one more thing. Yes. This time tomorrow night, you'll be playing. You'll be behind a drum kit. I'll be a maniac. With yes. One of the greatest bands in the world. Yes. When do you start well, to really think about that and start to gear up for that? Because you're very calm right now. But yeah. That's a big deal. Well. Is it still? Yeah, oh yeah, it is. I I have a. Um, you would have brought that up, you see. I, I suffer from stage fright, so you've actually triggered me already. <laughs> no, so I, I'll, be, I'll be drinking heavily tonight. You, you've no. obviously worked your way no. through it, though, through well, the years. We have, but, but never completely, which is also... Uh, that means you in, care, though, right? Well, uh, somewhere in there, or just, just flat out don't really know what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> um, but in good humor, um, these days... You, you stay fit for what I have to do. Um, we do three hours of full-on onslaught, and the drummer can't poop out, you know. You have to keep at it. And I don't want the way I play. I need to, to do that now. Uh, so lifestyle has changed, and um, I'm healthy, and I stay that way. And, uh, and it's all about doing that properly. The, the work ethic has to be there, which I might add, even in the very crazy days, there are a few shows that one doesn't really remember uh, in the 70s and 80s, there's no doubt. But generally, we had a, a weird mutant responsibility as performers that most performers don't want to go on stage and sell the audience short or make a fool of themselves. So um, I always like to say that because things are different these days. You know, we, we take care of ourselves and, and it's all about the travel and, and you get you work at resting and so you can do what you need to do. Uh, your instincts are, are intact. Um, so I don't really start overly thinking about it until I get to the show and I get in a complete routine um, in order for me not to be a gibbering wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, thank you. Pleasure. You're thank you for so much great music. Yeah. Great to have Christine back. I oh, think. it's amazing. It's got to be. Yeah, great. we are.